The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to CDW Research's uh, 1Q uh, Global Cement Trade Price Report webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning uh, uh, for allowing us the opportunity to share with you the highlights of this report. Uh, Next slide, please. So uh, just to give you a brief update on who is presenting, uh, my name is Prashant Singh. I'm the CW Group uh, Associate Director based at our Mumbai office. Uh, and I have two wonderful Hello everyone, I'm sorry, my name is Carolina Pereira. Uh, we seem to have a bit of a technical difficulties. I will be taking it um, from now on. On behalf of my colleague Prasha, <laughs> uh, we will continue our presentation. So, as Prasha was mentioning, uh, he is our associate director in our office in India. Uh, he's been involved with CW's uh, group's work for a long time uh, and has a very extensive knowledge when it knowledge when it comes to uh, a lot a lot of uh, what it is that we do in terms of uh, steel energy and also of course is acquired experience experience when it comes to to cement. Uh, Myself, Carolina Pereira, I'm a business analyst for, for CW Group, uh, and I've been leading our team, in, our European team in Porto. My colleague, Juliana, joins us. She's the ha one of the, the main participants in our report. She's a business analyst, originally uh, from uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Now, on the agenda for today, uh, we would like to start with a brief, I promise, a brief introduction to CW Group. We, and later on, uh, of course, the focus for this, uh, this webinar topic, the Global Cement Trade Prices Report, first quarter 2020 main highlights. We would start with a, an overview of the methodology. We will give you uh, a snapshot of world cement demand and of course also uh, a grey cement exports, uh, trends and outlook, exports pricing and closing remarks. About CW Group. Uh, First of all, in the advisory branch, and this is of course a company that, as many of you already know, uh, has three different, let's call it umbrellas. On the advisory branch, we do a lot of uh, market assessments, uh, feasibility studies, and a lot of the due diligence that hopefully can help uh, industry participants to make smarter and more informed decisions. Uh, this next will be 
the research branch where we basically produce a lot of the reports that we present here on the webinars. <laughs> uh, those reports go from the most our most famous one, work from TPR, the one that we are presenting right now, but also a volume forecast report that is also uh, in the works and almost finished at this point. Uh, and again, we already done a presentation at, on this, but the white cement uh, report and this being a, a trilogy that can give you all the insights on uh, on cement trade and price in the world. On our media branch, we uh, have what we call market data information, where we collect information on cement consumption, cement production uh, all over the world, and we report them uh, for our uh, subscribers. We have new newsletters on cement, coal, pet coke, uh, industry of paper and pulp, bulk, and building materials. This is all uh, given to you uh, on an online newsletter daily. Uh, with the particularity of the new selection being done uh, by the research team, which makes gives us a uh, competitive advantage of being always aware uh, and knowledgeable of what's happening in the marketing. In meetings, as you can see, uh, and this page, uh, we will be we have um, a series. Uh, in collaboration with GMI Global called CW Summits. We have I've been recently presenting uh, with Robert Matera, our managing director uh, on Miami in January this year. Uh, and we are planning right now, we are everything is in the works for a new edition, uh, but this time Imina. So instead of Americas, as we did in Miami, we would be focusing on the cement industry. Uh, uh, in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, with the addition of a new topic being uh, on the table of solid fuels. And our work in solid fuels is not new, but it's something that is not uh, even, hasn't been so, uh, let's call it, the central point of our work. But we are very glad to, we would like to invite you uh, to our next meeting happening in October 29 and 30 in Madrid. Now, um, I will be walking you through some of the highlights. Please, what uh, the report includes is explicit, is written in, the, in this page. I will encourage you to click the link. Don't want to make this too much of a painful process, process for the ones that already know us. Uh, but we cover more than 70 countries with trading data and have a lot of, um, uh, as you can see, trade exports and retail information. Uh, of course, and it's very easy to point out the fact that uh, when it comes to Africa, there's still uh, a lot of... Um, white countries in white which means that we are not covering them uh, we endeavor to collect the most re reliable and consistent data as possible once we don't want to jeopardize quality over quantity of course and we uh, always kind of do our very best and biggest efforts in order to collect as much information as possible but of course without compromising uh, uh, the consistency and the quality of the information and that's why we will continue to to try to make Africa uh, dark blue <laughs> let's call it <laughs> for the methodology you will see that we use uh, pre as preliminary or e as estimated and this is basically a saying that we have we have confirmed we have talked to people and we have estimated the numbers those numbers are not uh, collected by uh, official sources just yet. We will update them and of course we are, have our months with the NF forecasted. And this is basically of course we do with country by country, product by product and flow by flow in the time series regression. 
Now, uh, we would like to show you the highlights of Gray Cement Domestic Prices section. Uh, we will be providing some insights on the current market situation, but of course the report includes a much more detailed analysis on what is happening right now in the world and what to expect in the next quarter for bo both X-Works and retail prices. Starting with the quarter-on-quarter -quarter analysis of X-Works prices in this case, Sub-Saharan Africa and Western Europe are expected to show the most significant downturn in the first quarter of 2020. In Africa, South African construction sector is facing some, some challenges. The government reduced the investment spending in large-scale infrastructure projects and residential construction. The outbreak of coronavirus in early this year, of course, South African countries, as long as other, many others, but in this case specifically, South African construction firms have been facing difficulties with material shipments suffering delays. In Western Europe, uh, the slowdown in residential investments and increase in in-house prices in France helped decrease the prices in the region. On the other hand, uh, Eastern Europe and CIS, <laughs> Sorry, region, as well as North and Central America, are expected to witness increases. North America, mainly uh, due to the growth in, of construction activity in the US. Now, on a yearly basis, I show you an, uh, this heat map that provides you with a global overview of what is currently happening. Uh, this quarter and, and last quarter, so this is the, the price variation. Uh, Asia-Pacific X-Works prices are expected to decrease by 4% in China. Uh, X-Works prices are expected to decline to the, and decrease in the cement demand, of course, as a result of the impact of coronavirus. The devaluation of the Chinese Yuan during the first months of the year and the trend of that we further expect uh, to, to, to continue in the second quarter as the impact of the coronavirus on the Chinese economy becomes clearer. Also, as one of the main countries hit by the coronavirus, South Korea is expected to have a slower economic down growth um, throughout this quarter. In um, Med Basin region, the Med Basin region, um, although the Italian construction sector is expected to decline, the impact of coronavirus will likely result in a significant decline of export prices during the quarter. However, on a yearly basis, North America once again uh, has been, it shows here that we expect that export prices uh, will increase during the first quarter of the year due to growth in, again, construction activity in the country, in this case, the U US. Now, and in order to better understand trade prices uh, and the dynamics, we would like to, to, to provide you some country-level insights when it comes to cement demand. Starting with the positive trends in Spain, investment in infrastructure has provided impetus to Spanish cement demand. Although the demand increased in the last month of 2019, uh, for the next quarter of this year, we see it li likely to see a small decrease because of the, of course, the economic slowdown caused by uh, coronavirus. In Peru, demand of, for new infrastructure in the primary sector has provided support for cement consumption across the market. Uh, when looking at Colombia, uh, we've seen an increase in domestic construction activity. The government aims to sustain the construction sector. This trend is, is expected to continue in 2020 at a more moderate pace. Of course, again, because of the 
uh, uncertainty of what's to come when it comes to the global economy and the current pandemic. Looking now at the negative trends on the left side of the of our chart, in Brazil, strong rains compromised the construction sector and therefore the cement industry. This aligned with the uncertainty of the program Minha Casa Minha Vida that is expected to suffer some changes that can affect, of course, the construction sector in the country. Uh, when you look at Mexico, we've seen that the government has been cutting um, infrastructure investments and the sector has witnessed an increase in, in the cost of construction materials, including cement. I would like to thank everyone for your time and attention. Uh, and I would now pass my, the presentation to my colleague, Juliana. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Hello, everyone. My name is Juliana. To provide a context of the global market scenario, now I will present a volume analysis of trade in cementitious products in the recently concluded fourth quarter 2019. To start, Asia Pacific and Med Basin were the regions that reported the biggest export volumes during the quarter, and Turkey was the largest market trained, uh, market trading of gray and white cement while Vietnam was the main trade of clinker. During the past quarter, the Turkish manufacturers exported gray cement mostly to the US and to Israel. And for white cement, the US, Israel, Iraq, and Morocco were the main markets importing from Turkey. Now focus on clinker, more than 9% of the Vietnam's exports were direct to China and to Taiwan. And Japan is the biggest leg exporter with a share of more than 40% of the total exports, followed by India and Germany. When we talk about FOB average price during the fourth quarter of 2019, on a current quarter basis, North America and Caribbean were the regions with the biggest price drop of 5%, reaching just a bit less than $100 per ton, while Middle Eastern price increased more than 8% quarter on quarter. On a yearly basis, Med Basin FOB cement price decreased by almost 11%, reaching around $46 per ton, the region represents 26% of the global trade volume during this quarter. Now, in the first quarter of 2020, gray export prices are expected to increase by 1%, while clinker prices are likely to remain almost flat when compared to the first quarter of 2019. The Med Basin is likely to continue to be one of the major regions to export gray cement during this quarter, this first quarter of 2020. Now, moving on to the next slide, we provide an overview of gray cement FOB price change between our estimation of price in the first quarter of 2020 to our forecast to the second quarter of this year, with the exception of Western and Western Europe and Scandinavia, all the other regions will likely decline. To give you an idea, for North America, we forecast that the price could decline to around $107 per ton. And when we look at China, we expect to witness a decrease of around 2%. Although we expect expected France and Belgian price to decline, Western Europe is forecast to remain quite stable during the forecast quarter. Uh, please keep in mind that the price decline may in fact be sharper 
because the full impact of the coronavirus on the global econ economy is yet to be evaluated as the outbreak is still in progress. I would like to leave you with the closing remarks of our report. Please note that we focus on the highlights of this update and more detailed information is available in our report. So in the first quarter of 2020, we expect to a wide regional variation in exports price due to the price decline in China and the price increase in North America. Also, while Vietnam was the largest clinker exporter, Turkey remained the largest gray and white cement exporter. Uh, the clinker FOB price in the first quarter of 2020 are expected to remain stable with a slight, a slight declining trend caused by seasonal weather conditions and also the effect of coronavirus on the global economy. And overall, we can talk about the global average FOB price of gray cement when, when we talk about the global average FOB price of our gray cement. We expect to see a decline across regions for the next quarter. So thank you for your time and attention. See you on our ne next webinar.